Hey folks, Robbie Payne with Chrome Unboxed, and today we're going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of Google's Pixelbook and the Asus Chromebook Flip C302. Now this is in response to some readers that asked us some questions comparing these two devices after we published the comparison video between the Pixelbook and Samsung's Chromebook Pro. You can check that video out right up here if you're interested in that one. First up, let's talk about build quality. And this is one of the places where both devices actually line up pretty well. And it's just this beautiful all aluminum design that Asus has employed here. Fanless, so there's just feet on the bottom. The thing feels solid. Um, it has really nice squared off sides without being too boxy or too sharp. And overall, it's just super attractive. Again, we haven't had one in the office for months and I kind of forgot how attractive this device is and how gorgeous it is. It's just really, really well made. It also has a really good firm hinge, so we're not getting a lot of bouncing around on the Asus whenever we put pressure on the hinge. It folds obviously into a 360 degree tablet. And this is probably one weak spot of the Asus is it, it's a 16 by nine device. This makes for kind of an odd tablet. Um, you can kind of just tell it's real tall if you hold it in portrait mode. Moving over to the Pixelbook, it is a little bit thinner. Um, hopefully you can kind of catch that stuff on camera. The Pixelbook's uh, a good chunk thinner uh, than the Asus Chromebook Flip. And um, interestingly enough, whenever you compare the two on paper, it doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but really in person when you're holding the two, uh, the Pixelbook just feels super duper thin. Again, we're dealing with on the Pixelbook, the dual hinge design and things are firm enough. So, I mean, you're gonna get a little bit of wiggle on a convertible, that's just the way things go. But when you flip into tablet mode on the Pixelbook, uh, you get a better three by two aspect ratio here that feels a lot better when we go into portrait mode. It doesn't feel quite like the plank that a 16 by nine uh, tablet would feel like. Overall, it's really a push here when it comes to build quality. Both of these devices are built very well. They feel very firm. They're built out of great materials. They look great. They feel great when you're using them. So if you're looking at one over the other when it comes to build quality, which one feels like it's built better, I don't know that you can necessarily make an argument one over the other. All right, so the next thing we need to talk about is the screen. So there's multiple things that are different about these two devices when it comes to the screen. So for all their similarities, this is one of the parts uh, of this comparison that's a little more polarizing than the others. So first over on the Chromebook Pixel, we're dealing with a three by two aspect ratio. It is a 2400 by 1600 panel. So very high definition. Things render really nicely. Everything looks super duper crisp and it's also extremely bright. You can probably tell right now on camera uh, exactly how much brighter this device is than this one. So we're looking at about 400 nits here. We're looking at about 300 nits here. Over here on the Asus, we're dealing with a 16 by nine aspect ratio. And while a lot of people like that for productivity, uh, I tend to like the three by two because just from a sheer square inches, uh, you're actually getting more uh, for the same, uh, basically same amount of diagonal space. So here you're 12.3 inches diagonal, this one's 12.5, close enough to call them pretty much the same. And you can just tell looking at them, you get more screen over here than you get over here. But I can say after using multiple devices with a three by two display, uh, I really prefer the three by two display. And then the brightness wins over here as well. The colors are a little better. And lastly, there's a little thing with the Asus, and I don't know if this picks up on camera, and I've seen this in Dell monitors and a couple other ones, where around the edges, especially when you see white, uh, you actually kind of see this like ghosting. It almost looks like a vignette around the edges of the screen. And my guess is that's like the LEDs not quite getting to the edge. Uh, there's no sign of that here. Um, and I've seen it on, on other cheaper panels, uh, cheaper displays, budget kind of Chrome, or not just Chromebooks, but laptops in general. So um, I'm not sure what's going on there. I, I do remember that from the review unit earlier on in the year. After using it for an extended period of time, I, I don't notice it that much, but I did want to point out that that's there. So the next thing we want to talk about now that we move kind of past the screen are input methods. And this is another place where they're a little bit different, but most of these pieces are actually very, very similar on both of these devices. So let's talk about the keyboard. They're both backlit keyboards. Uh, they're both great keyboards. They're different. And again, we're, this is subjective stuff. There's, there's more travel on the Asus than there is on the Pixelbook. However, I prefer the clickiness of the Pixelbook's uh, keyboard to the Asus. Both of these are great keyboards, so that a lot of this is just so subjective. Um, 
but I have to give the win in keyboards to the Pixelbook. Uh, and again, that's just my preference. I, I really, really, really enjoy the keyboard on this thing. Let's move on to trackpads. Um, both of them have a really good click to them. Um, they're not loud and they feel good. They're not flopping around or, or, or weird. The surfaces on them are both smooth. But again, the Pixelbook kind of wins on this one because we've got a glass, an etched glass trackpad and I, what I want to say is probably plastic over here. And all that means is over time, I'm going to have to wipe this one off more often. So I, I've been working from this since we got it back in the office uh, just to kind of re-familiarize myself with it. And I've had to wipe the trackpad down a lot. With the Pixelbook, I wipe it down when I think about it because I'm just want to keep my device clean, not because it's starting to catch my fingers all the time. On this one, multiple times every day, I'm having to stop and you know wipe it down and clean it up. When it's clean, uh, it glides along just fine. All your gestures work just fine. Everything everything feels good. The click mechanism's good. It's not a bad trackpad. It's, it's pretty good. It's one of the best ones on a Chromebook. It's just not as good as the Pixelbook. The Pixelbook has arguably the best trackpad I've ever used, hands down. So, um, again, the Pixelbook kind of wins in, in this category. But yeah, there's no real comparison between these two because this one doesn't have pen input and you can use the fat tip, you know, basic capacitive stylus if you want, but that's a terrible experience. Nobody really likes that. And even the active stylus, we actually got some of those in and tried those and they're just, they're just not good. Uh, versus on the Pixelbook, you know, you can write notes and jot things down and even though there's not a place to put it, which is still a bummer, um, Obviously the win for input methods goes to the Pixelbook again because you've got the option here. With Samsung, at least you've got the stowable stylus and you may not like the way it lays out quite as nice or you may not like the way it feels in your hand quite as nice, but at least they both had a stylus. Uh, in this case, if, if you're looking for a stylus or you like the idea of having a pen or you like the idea of sketching or writing notes and that kind of stuff, um, if you're looking at these two devices and that's, that's a selling point for you, obviously you probably need to stick with the Pixel Book. Let's talk about speakers. I've seen a handful of comments around about how the ASUS has better speakers than the Pixel Book. And I was inclined to agree with that. Again, not having the device in my hands for a few months. In my head, I remembered the speakers being uh, pretty good. And one difference that you get on the ASUS, we actually have side firing speakers. So you have a speaker over there, speaker over here. So you're actually going to get uh, a better stereo separation for sure. I'm not gonna be able to show you that on camera. Uh, there's no way for me to pick that up necessarily. However, um, I do want you to hear the difference in the sound that these two devices put out because it's incredibly different. And again, a lot of this comes down to subjectivity, uh, but I tend to, kind of side with the Pixelbook if, as an overall thing. I don't listen to music much uh, out of the speakers on laptops, so uh, yeah, take it for what it's worth. So I'm gonna play this sample. This is a couple notches under full volume. Okay, and here's the Pixelbook. Now, one thing you have to remember with these is so with side firing speakers, they're kind of kind of be based on what's next to them and that kind of stuff, but you're gonna get much more stereo separation. So left channel stuff's gonna go way over here and sitting in front of it, as this is firing and there's stuff panning from left to right, I can hear that and I can pick up on that. So that's kind of a satisfying thing about the Asus. However, we have upward firing speakers on the Pixelbook with very little stereo separation, but way more clarity. Um, and, and you can hear that. I mean, just listen to the highs here. Compared to here. It almost sounds like the Asus is muffled a little bit. Um, you kind of get the same, same effect as when you cover something over. Uh, and I'm not really sure why that is. We have clear access to the, to the speaker ports. So I'm not sure why it kind of has that muddy sound. So you do get stereo separation, you get more low end out of the Asus, at, but it feels like you get way more mids and like no high end. Uh, over here on the Pixelbook, you get tons of high end, plenty of mids and basically no bass at all. So now that we've talked about all the pieces on the outside, let's talk really quickly about the inside bits. Now, if you've come to this video and you've kind of done some research, you know, this one comes with a Core M3, a sixth generation Core M3 processor. This one comes with a seventh generation Core i5 processor, soon to have a Core i7 variant, but I don't know exactly who's gonna buy that particular device. 
This one comes with four gigs of RAM, this one with eight gigs of RAM. This one comes with 64 gigs of internal storage. This one comes with 128 gigs of internal storage. Now, there are some variants out there in the wild. There's a Core M5 version of this with the same specs. And then there's a Core um, i5, eight gig of RAM, 256 gig of internal storage. But again, we're comparing kind of the baseline of both of these devices. So this is the, the uh, baseline Pixelbook, and this is the, you know, the baseline um, Chromebook Flip that we're dealing with here. So again, we're wanting to compare apples to apples here. And when it comes to performance, I will say, yes, the Pixelbook is faster. Um, on day-to-day -day use, when I have it hooked up to an extended monitor with multiple tabs and multiple activities going at the same time, yes, this device is faster. I notice little, if any, hiccups or lag ever because it just chews through those things. And there are a couple reasons for that. Mainly it's the processor. Part of it is the RAM. But the processor, uh, the seventh generation Intel chips are actually far more uh, power efficient and, and stronger at performance, especially in Chromebooks, than the sixth generation. And there's, there's tons of stuff on the internet about uh, the Skylake versus KB Lake and how much better KB, like KB Lake was, is what Skylake should have been. Um, you know, you can go read all that kind of stuff and see. But I can tell you just from real world performance, this thing feels way faster. Um, and again, you have eight gigs of RAM over here. So even when you have multiple things open, you, you've given Chrome OS plenty of overhead to deal with all of that extra stuff. All that being said, over here on the Asus, I've been able to work from it and not really sweat it too much. And some of that is in part to the fact that we've just got a 1080p screen here. Now you can see from uh, looking at both of them, I mean, performance is, is plenty fast on both. Uh, and, and so I, I don't want to split hairs here. When we when we talk about running a bunch of stuff, like if you're really a heavy user, you got some Android apps open, you got 10 tabs, you got music playing, you got all that kind of stuff. Yeah, with an extended screen hooked up, you're going to see some issues over here. But it does get along really, really nicely, and it actually bests the Chromebook Pro that is a similar setup because of that 1080p screen. It's a lot less pixels to push around than this one's got. If you do the math, I mean, it's a fraction of the number of pixels. When you multiply 2400 by 1600 and compare that to 1920 by 1080, it's a, a lot less pixels. And every time, you gotta think about it, every time a frame goes, you gotta redraw every one of those pixels. And so it's way less stress on the processor as a whole. Now, that doesn't make up for everything. It doesn't mean that they feel the same. They don't, um, and I, I don't wanna tell you that they do. However, for most users, the Pixelbook's a little bit of overkill, and I'm okay with saying that, and I'm okay with owning one and knowing that that's the case. I, I, I like to have the headroom to know that I don't have to worry about what I'm gonna do or what I'm gonna open, or, oh, I should close my tabs, and I like to just work and work and work until I feel like cleaning up my workspace. Uh, this device isn't, quite as good at that as the Pixelbook is. But for day-to-day -day stuff, when we're talking about running some Android apps and browsing the web and firing back an email and opening up some docs and those general things, it performs better than most Chromebooks. So where does that leave us? Well, in general, the two devices are very different in their pricing. So we've talked about a lot of stuff where they're really similar and there's some stuff that is polarizing in here and it's, there's a handful of things that maybe it's very simple for you to make a decision that one of these two isn't for you. But one of those things we've got to talk about when we talk about these two devices specifically, and you know, I'll throw the Samsung Chromebook Pro in there as well, is price. The Pro and the Flip have both come down in price a little bit. Uh, around the holidays and they might just stay at that price point. It doesn't seem like they're going back up yet. So the pros at 450, you can have the Asus Chromebook Flip C302 for uh, just depending on the day, anywhere between 430 and $460. So that's knocking at least 40 to $70 off what it's been for almost a year. So it's been $500 pretty much all year long. And so we're finally starting to see it come down in price a little bit. And what becomes really interesting is the Pixelbook you're going to find maybe 50 bucks off here or there or something like that on it. In general, $999 plus tax. So you're looking at $1,000 for the Pixelbook. You're looking at $450 to $500 for the Asus Chromebook Flip C302. So quite literally, you could buy two of these and have $100 to $150 to just go buy other things. Two of them. Two Chromebooks. Uh, so you could have one for you and give one to somebody else and maybe buy a mouse or uh, a plant or some shirts 
or food or whatever it is you want to use that extra money on, you've got to think about those things. And that's not to say that if you choose to buy the Pixel Book, that it's not worth it. Or it's not to say that if you choose to buy the Pixel Book, that uh, you're making a foolish decision or any of those things. You just have to think about that. So for me, when I thought about this purchasing decision and the devices that were out there, obviously if I want to buy a Chromebook, I'm going to use every day. It was between this, the, the Pixelbook, the Flip C302, and then the Samsung Chromebook Pro. I chose the Pixelbook. I like the fact that I've got extra headroom. I like the fact that this has got top-notch performance. I like that it has the best keyboard, the best trackpad, the best screen. It's a push with the Pro, right? But the best of pretty much everything, the best build quality, it's thinner than all the other ones. It's got crazy battery life. You know, all those things to me line up, add the pen in there, uh, the looks, the aesthetic appeal of it, all those pieces come together for me to say, you know what, it's worth spending this money on this device. Over here, sure, I could have bought two of these for the same price, correct? But if I put these two together, and I said this in the Samsung video, if I stack two of these together, it doesn't make either one of them any faster. It doesn't make either one of them have a better screen or a trackpad or a keyboard or any of those things. It just means I've got two of the same thing. And two medium or slightly good things does not always combine to make one really, really, really great thing. And I'm a huge fan of the Pixelbook. I love it. I think it's a really, really spectacular device. So for me, it was Pixelbook, but maybe not for you. You have to make that decision on how you want to spend your money and what's more important and whether having some extra money in the bank is more important or having the best of all these categories is more important. I can't make that decision for you. And I've never pretended that I could. What I wanted to do was lay this stuff out so that if you're going, well, I really like the Pixel Book, but I'm, I don't know if I'm going to feel sad if I get the Asus or I'm going to feel disappointed. I can tell you either one of these devices, they're both great. And if you've looked at the Asus and you feel pretty good about it, I'm going to tell you, you're probably going to be pretty happy with it. But if you're not happy, unless you have the best of everything, go with the Pixel Book. If you want to ask me which one is a better device overall, you can probably tell the Pixel Book is better at most things than the Asus Chromebook Flip C302. But it's twice the price. So the decision's on you. I hope we've helped you make a good purchasing decision here. I hope we've helped you decide which one is going to work best for you. If we have, give us a thumbs up. You can check out the description down below for links to where you can purchase either one of these. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, guys. And until next time, we'll see you. <music>